We welcome you back inside Providence Park. Second half of this NWSL semifinal just about to get started. Portland Thorns trailing the Western New York Flash by one. Portland, the regular season champions, winners of the Shield for the first time, hosting a playoff match for the first time here in Providence Park. But finding themselves down a goal against a very aggressive Western New York team that led the league in scoring this season. The sunshine coming out. Just get a good feeling about this second half. The first one couldn't have been more entertaining. Even Coach Parsons said to us yesterday, he wishes he was neutral in this because he'd love to just sit back and watch this game, but he knew he was going to be nervous because of the pressure and the intensity and the anticipation. I'm glad we get to be neutral and sit back and enjoy this game. Absolutely. Portland 2-0 this season against Western New York, but we saw the flash fight back two late goals the last time. McDonald gets in behind from her strike partner, Williams. 21 goals between those two this season as Raboni does a little dance, spins around, and eventually puts the ball into the gloves of Michelle Betos. And we talked about the two varying styles for these two teams, the way they go about things. But we also need to remember they're both so skilled, capable of going about it a different way if that's what is presented. And that's really how Portland got the goal through Christine Sinclair. They looked a little more direct. Quick ball trying to get her in behind over the top. Well, I think it, when the good, you're the good teams, their good teams have to switch things up like that. They pass, pass, pass. We saw one time, what did they combine? Maybe 10, 12 passes in a row. But you've got to try to counter and catch teams off guard. Don't be afraid to play a direct long ball every once in a while. And that's exactly how Sinclair got that beautiful volley. And if you're Western New York, you have to figure, other than their head coach Paul Riley being sent off, they got what they wanted in that first half. They got a quick start. They had the first goal in the 16th minute from Mewis. Tacked on another one. They have the lead here to start the second half. Now it's a matter of figuring out how to hold off what you know is going to be coming from this Portland team that's not going anywhere. Thorns just three losses on the season. I guess we'll play it back to Betos. And here's that high pressure. Look at Ooh. Doniak was there. Urseg trying to get to it. Does. A lot of holding going on. I think both players involved in it. Amandine Henri and Urseg. But the foul will go against Henri. And Mark Parsons frustrated about some of the things going on on the field. You heard him talk about it at halftime. When it looked like right here as Urseg's trying to pull away. Shield the ball. Henri might have been doing a little bit too much tugging, but yes, Parsons did mention. Dahl Kemper just takes it herself, but too high. Parsons mentioned that gamesmanship heading into the half. Kind of looks like, at least to me from up here, that it could be 50-50 on that gamesmanship all over the field. But, you know, the coaches are always going to feel it's a little bit <laughs> more slighted towards... The other side. Zerboni. Megan Klingenberg. Trying to hold off Doniak. Eddie has it back for Western New York. It's momentarily. Good pressure being applied by Portland here as Tobin Heath is fouled. The gamesmanship there, perhaps, as Elizabeth Eddy getting up and twirling around right in front of the ball, but 
Klingenberg's going to take her time here anyway. Get the pieces set in front of her. Williams looking for McDonald. Heath and Horan doing some nice work along this near sideline. Horan, he's sneaking back in there. Sinclair in the vicinity as well. Klingenberg gives it away. McDonald looking for Williams. The golden boot winner plays it off the outside of her foot for Doniak. Mackenzie Doniak to the end line. The cross, Williams, and it dribbles into the gloves of Betos. Williams with a little smile on her face, but how about the passing play from Western New York to build on this right side and just a little bit behind Williams so she couldn't get enough on it. Did everything she could just to get her foot on it in the first place. That's why she gave that little grin at the end, but I love that combination play up the right side. Joniak slowly tracking back now. Eddie impedes the progress of Heath and will be whistled for it. And right here, Eddie, she's trying to take a good defensive position, but Heath so good, so unpredictable. Clearly had her beat. And it's a tough matchup over there. Elizabeth Eddy, second year player with the flash. Never played right back before this season. Now trying to defend Tobin Heath. Well, bending, bouncing ball in by Heath, scooped up by Sabrina D'Angelo. Clearly a set play to play that ball in low on the ground. Bending it around the wall, but in. And Allie Long just couldn't catch up to it. And Heath, with her hands on her knees, really bothered by something. She tries to get moving again. As the ball will go back to Western New York. Feels like, looks like she's trying to figure something out. Don't know if it happened when she took the dead ball or on the prior play, but. D'Angelo, her ball finding its way to Portland. And again, Heath really struggling here. She's going to stay down on the sideline. Holding that right knee. You know, talking to the Portland players and asking about Tobin Heath this season. And I think one of the first things Megan Klingenberg said was she's healthy. We've got a healthy Tobin Heath and you're seeing what she can do. NWSL record for assists. Here comes Mewis in Western New York. And Dean Henri helping out defensively. She needed to. Portland down a man at the moment with Heath being tended to on the sideline. Hinkle sends it in. Two Farber Bagos the header. Wow, Beto's moving across the face of her goal to get back. First of all, Hinkle with a nice run up that left side. Beautiful ball in. Look at the movement by Beto's and the positioning to make that save and then hang on to the ball. Wow. Great header by Doniak, but Beto's just saving the day. What did you say that Mark Parsons told you it was going to come down to who played the best defense in this game? Absolutely spectacular save there from Betos. She's done that a couple of times. She had a big save in the first half as well. As Tobin Heath returns, the crowd lets her know they appreciate it. The attacking caliber of both these teams, you know both goalkeepers are going to have to come up big. I've already seen Betos and D'Angelo do it a couple of times. Betos in particular. Hinkle again working the ball. She's been good when she's gotten into the attack.
Tobin Heath still looking a little hesitant. Yelled over to her head coach when she stepped back on that she was going to give it a shot. So I know all the fans and her teammates would love to see her out here for the rest of the first, the second half. No doubt about that. Special player Tobin Heath is both in the international level and especially this season getting to see her show what she can do. Third corner kick of the match. First of the second half for Western New York. Ursic seems to always be in the vicinity of the ball in the air. Good step by Eddie there to recover after kind of a misplayed ball in. I'm going to try to take a look back, show you where we think the injury may have happened. Watch Heath's right knee. Yeah, because the collision on, was on the left knee there that she actually hit Eddie. So you have to wonder. Sometimes it's that stabilizing exactly. leg that gives you problems. <laughs> Didn't Paul Riley tell us that he was going to ask his team to kind of they worked a lot on this section of the game coming out at the beginning of the second half and being calm and stable and solid, not just flying all over. They've been flying. Portland trying to get the ball into the area. They do. D'Angelo is out. Haran tries to slide and get there. And really the first offensive chance of the second half for Portland. D'Angelo missed on the punch. And her defender then headed that one out, but it still wasn't out of danger. Long's ball in. Goes to D'Angelo. And just a great service. Bending away from the keeper. That's why D'Angelo couldn't get to it. And then Nadim tries to get on the end of it. Keep it in play. Right there. Eddie in the right spot at the right time to help out. And I think on the initial ball, she may have actually gotten her head to it too and thrown off. D'Angelo a little bit. Zerboni trying to work around. But now it's in the feet of Tobin Heath and Portland. There's that Heath Urseg matchup again, won by the New Zealand captain. And that was a good clean tackle. Not a good ball there, but that one safely headed back by Sonic. And Heath again. A couple little moves on that one. Burst of speed. Ursa could see her opportunity. She had to take her chance right there to make a nice tackle. Good clean steal of the ball there by Ursa. Everybody wanting a flag up. She wasn't offside though yeah. because Hinkle was tracking Nadim on that far side, kept Sinclair on side. So Western New York going to have to be careful if they want to try to raise their arm for that offside position. They better be pulling up together. McDonald. Herseg thinking Doniak. Klingenberg trying to get it out for Portland. Haran a calming touch helps her. Henri had it for a moment, but it will go to Doniak and the flash. Both McDonald and Williams making runs. Nobody's going to be able to get on the end of that one, though. When we mentioned that Western New York head coach Paul Riley sent off in the first half, acting head coach Scott Vallow patrolling the sideline now for the flash. We were told that Paul Riley able to address the team at halftime. And you said it at the time, Kendra, it's always an interesting dynamic in any sport when that happens. It can be a huge momentum shift one way or the other. Well, and part of it, you know, soccer is probably the game that the coach is involved in the game the least. There are no timeouts. You can't do set plays. The coach isn't yelling in for the most part. Things from the sideline. It's so much a thinking man's game, a thinking woman's game in the midst of it. You've got to solve problems by yourself. You hope you've prepared them enough before the match. 
that they can get the job done without you standing on the sideline. Horan couldn't quite get that ball. Let's see Mark Parsons. Really enjoyed speaking with him yesterday and talking about his first year after coming to this team from Washington, a team he sure would like to be able to face off against one more time this season with the spirit awaiting the winner of this match in Sunday's, next Sunday's NWSL Championship. What a game that was. We said on Friday night, man, if Sunday's going to be any, this is any indication of what we're going to see Sunday, bring it on. And I think we've had all of that and more. Long looking for Nadim. Mewis, a little too heavy on that touch as that ball still bounding across the center of the field. Nobody really able to get up to it. You know, for Portland, this is a team trying to snap what has been a rather unlucky stretch for Shield winners in this league. The NWSL regular season champion has never gone on to win the championship. Lynn Williams, look at the speed of Williams, trying to beat her to the ball. And Sonnet just step for step, staying with her as best she could. Wow, Sonnet, an incredible job there. That is not an easy player to stay with step for step. And Beto's coming off of her line at just the right time. Got two players, and Emily Mengess, the other one in the back of that line. Year-end award candidates in NWSL, as is Tobin Heath. Wow, there's a lot of contacts going on in there. Mark Parsons can't believe it. Beautiful ball in over the top. Tobin Heath with the moves, makes the flick. You can see Dahl Kemper trying to stay with her, shielding her off. Taking her down. Taking her down. No call, though. But Heath and the Thorns at it again. Now Henri sending the ball far post for Nadine. I mean, Tobin Heath with the beautiful flick. So cheeky on that move. Had Dahl Kemper beat. Well, fans, be sure to mark your calendar for the 2016 National Women's Soccer League Championship next Sunday, October 9th at BBVA Compass Stadium in Houston, Texas. Tickets for the NWSL Championship game are on sale now at nwslchampionship.com with prices starting at just $20. And like Kendra said a few moments ago, if you're watching this match, if you watched the match in Boyd's, Maryland, between the Washington Spirit and the Chicago Red Stars on Friday, yeah, I'd be getting my tickets right now to go see what this final is going to be like. It's been entertaining, exciting, and passionate soccer. think there's any question Portland is a frustrated team right now for a variety of reasons one perhaps being the officiating and some of the gamesmanship and bumps that are being taken out there Mark Parsons said as much at halftime but this is also a veteran team with a lot of world-class players who know they need to just figure out how to play through that Christine Sinclair with the huge goal less than a minute after Western New York Went up by two in the first half. Over to Haran. Heads that down to herself somehow. And then it'll go out for a Portland corner. I don't think you can understate what Lindsay Haran has meant to this team. Great to see her in the NWSL this season, her first year in the league after playing Paris Saint-Germain last few years. into the box for long. And 
they'll get another corner kick out of it. Corner kick number six. Bending a little too much that time. Well, tonight, as the MLS playoffs draw near, the Vancouver Whitecaps set their sights on finishing above the red line as they face the Seattle Sounders. Don't miss all the action beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern on FS1. Western New York Flash trying to take down the Portland Thorns for the first time this season. As they are 0-2 against this Portland team. And the Thorns trying to fight back here. Dahl Kemper does enough defensively. You can see both players going down for the slide there, getting right up. He Whoa. finds an open Horan. Lindsey Horan still with the ball, dancing, trying to get past Dahl Kemper. There's one thing you don't want to do on defense is get split because all of a sudden that opens up a whole lot of space and Horan did well there to find it. Dahl Kemper recovered, played safe and out the end line. Got to keep an eye on Allie Long here. She and Heath have connected quite a bit lately. Oh, that ball again, maybe bending a little bit too much. Well, Sonnet making that run to the near post. And Heath there, that's two times in a row. Looks like that's where she's aiming. Sonnet, one of the shorter players on the team, so maybe unexpected for the opponent. Tries to flick that one on. Yeah, great point. And Sonnet did really well just to even keep that ball in play. Western New York making a substitution. Taylor Smith, the rookie out of UCLA. Will come on for Doniak, who at the moment has the goal standing as the game winner. Doniak's goal in the 38th minute has Western New York in the lead. Well, Smith, a definite spark off the bench for this Western New York flash side. And there she is on the ball immediately. Ton of speed. Little dribbler in the area. That's just what Western New York needs up top. More speed, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's just exactly what Portland's going. Oh, man. Eddie in a tight space. Mew is just so smart. Right there, she took a look. She could have played it, tried to play it through. Hinkle to McDonald to Hinkle on the first ball switch field, but there was one or two players in between her. Play it back, play it safe, and then switch it out the other side. Never trying to force it and turn it over in the middle of the field. Mew is called in to the U.S. national team for their last couple of friendlies. Dahl Kemper under some pressure from Horan. Well done by McCall Zerboni there. Excellent work to keep the ball in. Will she be rewarded for it? Smith making a run with those fresh legs off the bench for the flash. Back central. The shot. Betos again. Is Western New York just cool and calm? And Zerboni, after all that work, she gets to take this shot. That was a weird little shot. I don't know. She takes a touch. It's almost like she lofted it, chipped it up the corner. Like it fooled Betos or had some funky spin on it because it wasn't laser shot up there. Credit Betos for not only saving the ball, but keeping herself from banging her head on the post. And Zerboni started that fantastic play on that left flank, on the left side. Service driven. Alana Kennedy, the Australian international, once again, she often is a target on those types of set pieces. And now Portland will make its first substitution. Dagny Brynja's daughter. First year with 
this Portland team is the crowd that's Nadia Nadim no they appreciate all she has done this season well, and that sub already was probably lined up, but you could see on that last play where Zoboni was making that run on the left flank. Nadine was trying her hardest to track back, and it was like she just lost that next gear. She's been doing a lot of work on the field. Yep, excellent point. Smith, slow to get up here. Welcome to the match. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's gonna, it might not be the only bumper bruise you walk away with tonight. Question is, who's going to walk away with that ticket to the championship in Houston? Ball still bouncing around dangerously in the area. Henri flipped from behind by Mewis, who just calmly keeps on running. She knew. Yeah, she, she wasn't going to argue that one. You know, you said welcome to the match for Taylor Smith, who was maybe kind of banked up, and then Dagny Brynjus daughter going to look at Henri there. But Dagny Brynjus daughter, who just came in for Portland, you may remember last time, I think yes. it was one of her first touches when she came off the bench against Western New York, had a goal. That put Portland up 3 nothing in that match. It's always nice to have a spark off the bench. Taylor Smith is that for Western New York and Brynja Sauter, at least the last game we saw was that way for Portland. There is Smith. And you could tell that Paul Riley really thinks a lot of Smith and what she'll be able to do in the future. Actually started her in the last match at outside back against Boston. That was the last match of the regular season. Western New York needed it. Needed a point there at least to get into the playoffs. Crowd not liking how long it is taking Nabi Dahlkemper to get over and take this corner. I don't blame him. 73rd minute. Clock is ticking. Now the service from Dahlkemper. He had it for a moment for Portland. No scoring in the second half. All three of our goals coming in the first half. Samantha Mewis in the 16th minute. Mackenzie Doniak in the 38th minute. Western New York led it two to nothing at that point. And then Christine Sinclair with a quick answer in the 39th minute. Brought us to our current score line of two to one. And both of these teams have been excellent this season when scoring first, unbeaten in fact. A little bit more of an uphill battle when they've had to come from behind. Unbeaten when they've scored first, but Western New York definitely with the more experience from having to come from behind. Yes, look at Williams. Gets around it this time, looking for some help. Smith is there. Hinkle will step in. But you get the feeling with this Portland side, you've talked about the veteran leadership, the players on this roster in front of their home crowd. Hinkle's service, looking for McDonald. Long. Heath tripped up. Boy, she has been on the ground a lot today. She's letting the ref know she is not happy about it. Always talk about the atmosphere here in Providence Park. First time hosting a playoff match in NWSL. And guess what? It's a new NWSL playoff record. Over 20,000 on hand for the greatest atmosphere in women's professional soccer in the world. We were pulling up two hours plus before the game. And the crowd standing outside the front gates waiting for them to open this stadium. It was out to the street. Unbelievable fans here. Henri finds Brynja's daughter. Oops. Yeah, they were trying to connect, but then really Zerboni has been so active on that side for Western New York. A little incidental contact. A referee's going to say play on, as he should, with Lynn Williams with the ball and the shot, but right to Betos. It's like Zerboni 
took some sort of energy drink, drink at halftime, and she was <laughs> she was on her toes in the first half. But the second half, she's made some of these runs. I don't know where she found this renewed spark. She's been fantastic she the last has. few minutes, especially. Mewis to Williams. I think it's really a battle of wills when you get late in these games to find the energy to go forward because you're doing so much work defensively. You know if they counter, you've got to get back, and you're going to be making those long runs on the outside. So it's a, it's a mental battle to decide to make those runs forward when you're just getting to the point of exhaustion. Well, I think we saw beautiful Whoops. examples of that from both teams on Friday as another hard foul in the middle of the field. We'll put her hand down on the grass here at Providence Park and our referee Marco Vega immediately calling for some attention. And I think that one was Dahl Kemper. With a little bit of a shove there as they both go up for that 50-50 header. And Horan is so tough, so good in the air. It's not the first time she has hit the deck tonight. Tobin Heath stands over the ball for Portland. Thorns looking for the equalizer. Brenda's daughter was just issued a yellow card, by the way. I think he just took out another yellow, though. Two yellow cards were just issued. One we know is to Dagny Brynja's daughter. There is a lot of shoving and elbowing going on. Heath, service. D'Angelo is out. The ball's still in the box. Sonny with the equalizer. Sonnet is going to remember her first career NWSL goal because that was it. Well, and then the official immediately surrounded by four white jerseys, unhappy about something on that goal, but what a finish by Sonnet. She has done a tremendous job in the back tonight. She's got a lot to deal with, chasing Williams down on a couple occasions and then getting in on that dead ball. And you know what I loved? She kept playing. As we watched the replay, you could see players from both teams, their hands in the air. There's no foul being called. Yes. What's happening? She kept playing the ball and was rewarded for it. And look at where she starts to run. She's over here on the far right side and outside the 18. Then she loops around and gets it on the other side. She started that run on the far right side, about as far away from the ball as you could get, and just stayed with it. Sinclair trying to get around Eddie. Being told, by the way, that second yellow card in that sequence went to Abby Dahlkemper of Western New York. So Dahl Kemper and Brynja Stoddard both with yellows just before that kick was taken. And the goal was scored by Sonnet. I think both teams, both coaches, everybody has to somehow stop worrying about the referee and the calls that are or are not made because at some point you're gonna, it's going to take away from the game. You're going to be distracted as we saw. You said it. A couple players holding their arms up on both mm -hmm. sides. So that nice combination work. Brittany Sonner with the run and the kick save from D'Angelo. Oh. 
Henri gets the ball in. Mewis goes up. Still some trouble here if you're Western New York, especially with Sinclair and Brynja's daughter right there. Nice Raboni tries to clear it out, but it goes right to the Thorns. Hinkle can't get around long. Now you talked about all the emotion, frustration. Well, guess what? Now it's an even game. You've got 10 minutes to determine if you're going to be the one going to the NWSL championship. Both of these clubs have been there before, but there's been a lot of roster turnover for both of them. In fact, they faced each other in the inaugural NWSL championship game. Portland winning that one. momentum so often does seems to have shifted to the home team thorns in this second half in this latter half of the second half Dahl Kemper with another hard foul remember now she is on a yellow she's been pretty physical all day long and I'm pretty sure that's some version of what Ali Long was just saying to Marco Vega. And Sinclair, too. And she was pretty animated. Dull Kemper, then she goes in and states her case that Tobin Heath is backing into her, kind of posting up almost. But it doesn't matter. Dull Kemper, you're on a yellow. So you might have to play a little more cautious because the referee already has his eye on you. You've got to be smart. And Tobin Heath is a very, very smart player. She's going to know where she can draw the fouls where she maybe needs to t take a little bit more of a, not a dive, I don't want to call it a dive because there was clearly some contact there, but she knows what she's doing out there, putting herself in a position to draw a foul. Remember, the last free kick for the Thorns resulted in the tying goal. Service from Heath, no problem this time, though, for D'Angelo. What a match. Will 90 minutes be enough to decide this one? It took extra time in our first semifinal on Friday night. Long trying to have that ball hold up for Haran. Eddie clears it out. Haran out to Heath. Time for Tobin Heath. Eddie makes the stop defensively. Smith is going to put that ball in behind. McDonald to do all she can to try to get there. Menges. Well, did you see Betos? She all the way went, out. came back. Yeah. You know, she hesitated. Her defense did well there. Look at Mark Parsons. I can see him on the sideline here. Looking at Tobin Heath saying, just calm down, settle down. She wanted that last foul. Williams near post. Yeah, I think that's been the message from Mark Parsons quite a bit in this match. When we look down there and can see him just below our position here. Settle down. Be patient. Be confident. That ball intercepted by Zerboni for a moment, but Brynja's daughter got it right back. Moran wanting to pick out Heath who has been more involved, I'd say, in this second half. That was one of the keys to this match for Western New York. Keep it off the side of the field where Heath is. Push it the other direction. Well, the first half, she was floating in up top and to the other side a lot more. This today, this afternoon, I should say, the second half, she stayed home on the left side, not floating as freely in the second half. I think by her own choice, and it seems to be working for her. Long. Now Henri, a little over Sinclair. Mewis.
Goes back to Western New York. This Portland team, number one defense in the league in the regular season. So good here at home. Keeping opponents out of the back of the net late in matches. Early in the season, they gave up some earlier goals as this is going to go out to Heath. Henri to Haran. Allie Long with some time. Not the ball she wanted, or not the connection she wanted. You can see her talking with both Brynja's daughter and Sinclair. Well, she's yelling at Brynja's daughter to make that run around, and Brynja's daughter looks at her and says, play to my feet. I'm checking back. So, you know, it's just the passion on the field, and Allie Long clearly passionate when the ball's not sent where she wants it or vice versa, someone's not making a run. That's just a competitive, fiery nature. Now well, Paul Riley has found himself a seat to take in this game. The head coach for the Western New York Flash sent off in the first half. Well, Mark Parsons said he wished he could sit back and watch it, but I'm guessing that's not exactly how he wished it would have happened for him or for Paul Riley on the other side. Either way, it has been an entertaining match to watch. I don't think anyone would argue that. Should we go to extra time? Reminder, there is no golden goal. So we would have two 15-minute periods and then head to the penalty kick shootout as Tobin Heath gets the crowd even a little more into it as she gets ready to take this corner kick. What a great camera angle from the end there to just get a real feel for the stadium and the fans. Heath on the ground, long charging toward the ball. And my point before was that Portland has been so good not allowing goals late except Western New York did it to them twice here at home in the last matchup. The Flash scored in the 77th and the 80th minute to make that a one goal game just couldn't quite come all the way back. Do either of these teams have what it takes to pull out a late goal in regulation and keep it from extra time here? Another long throw here, so dangerous for Western New York. That's what I was talking about. No goals allowed after the 55 minute in the first seven home matches of the season. So the first seven matches, five goals allowed here at home for Portland. None of them after the 55th minute, but the last three all coming late in the game, interestingly. Two by Western New York. Williams just unable to keep the ball and Hinkle, excuse me, unable to keep the ball for Western New York. So Klingenberg has it on the other side now for Portland. Klingenberg connecting, looking for Sinclair. Right back to the Thorns. He don't give her that much time. D'Angelo protecting that near post. He sees a little window right there, and you see that bending away towards the post. Heath has Brynja Stoddard on the far side making a run. She delivers it. That'll be another corner kick coming for Portland. Their ninth of the game. Brynja's daughter makes that run on that right side, gets in behind Hinkle, just points to where she wants the ball. And if there's anybody who's going to deliver it there, it's, it's Tobin Heath. She put it right in the spot for her to run onto it. Heath's ball headed toward D'Angelo. Always that game of how far away do you put it? From the goalkeeper, yet still have it in a danger enough spot. And Sabrina D'Angelo nabbed it. Final seconds of regulation. 
ticking off the clock here at Providence Park. There will be a minimum of three minutes of stoppage time added. Klingenberg trying to take the throw. Haran can't get it around Urseg, but does get some help from Sinclair. Long trying to prick out Brynja's daughter. And Brynja's daughter loses it out of bounds. Dagny Brynja's daughter, one of five players for Portland to have at least five goals on the season. Talk about depth for this Thorns team, the only team in the league to make that claim. Five different players with at least five goals, and Brynja's daughter coming off the bench a lot of the time. Henri gets it back to Brynja's daughter. Henri loses the ball. That's McCall Zerboni once again working hard on that far sideline. Alana Kennedy. Going to get it up to McDonald. And then Sonnet will track it down, keep it moving for Portland Betos. Watch out. Ball will get in behind Kennedy, but Haran not quite close enough to it. Still, it'll be a throw in for the Thorns. Good long throw in the box for Brynja's daughter. Stays in. Heath has Eddie on her back. Gets it through to Klingenberg. Eddie recovers. Well, I think Heath and Klingenberg just missed each other by a half step on that pass as Klingenberg was trying to make that run through. Right there. Just a little bit behind her. Haran is running on to this ball. D'Angelo has to get up and go for it, but gets just enough air and... We're getting close. May hear that whistle soon. The referee Marco Vega with a whistle in his mouth, and there it is. How about it? Both NWSL semifinals in 2016 headed to extra time. Exactly what we expected, and we're going to see more of it in the extra time. Both teams get a little chance to regroup, catch their breath. So 90 minutes, once again, not enough in the postseason. You got to love it. These two teams have been going at it all game long. We're going to get a little more after this one from Sonnet tied it up. Extra time.